I'm Pratiksha Gupta, the founder of One Special Place. Um, I am a speech language therapist and I've been working for many years with children uh, who have speech and language difficulties. Today, Anjana, who is my co-host for this video, today we both of us thought that in these difficult times where we are all stuck up at home, um, we just wanted to do this video together uh, to share our experience about um, telepractice and how effective it is for uh, children and adults uh, on the spectrum, on the autism spectrum. Um, these are difficult times, challenges um, are surmounting and we don't know when it's going to end. We never expected this to happen. So here we are just with a small plea to all of you uh, to embrace teletherapy um, because um, this is a good resort and a good method to delivering uh, speech therapy and other therapies as well. Hi, uh, my name is Anjana. I'm a speech language pathologist and uh, a coach. Uh, so my intention is um, to connect to as many families as possible who have uh, children with, who are different, who have differently wired children and um, um, discuss about telepractice and how it is beneficial in, in the present pandemic uh, situation. This is the Autism Awareness Week. We thought of uh, collaborating, Anjana and I, thought of putting some information together to bust some myths around telepractice and autism. As most of you might know that um, uh, One Special Place, the startup that I founded, it aims to deliver online speech therapy via telepractice to um, people in India. And uh, um, we, we have been quite successful running it since the last five years. And uh, so I hope you find this video useful. Um, and uh, we'll first start by understanding what exactly is telepractice. Anjana, do you want to share something? Yeah, I think uh, telepractice is uh, making use of technology um, uh, to, uh, to carry out any um, rehabilitation or carry out um, a program, educational program, running an educational program. Uh, rehab and, and, and you know, uh, nowadays, I mean, at least in the present situation, uh, this has come more into picture. So um, many of the educational institutions, schools and organizations are getting into telepractice. Uh, but with respect to, yeah, um, therapy for children or families um, who, who have children with labeled with autism. I think we'll stick more um, specifically to, um, specifically autism, to yeah, only in this video. autism. Yeah. Yes. So these are perilous, difficult, unprecedented times where uh, the uh, rapid spread of COVID-19 has, uh, um, you know, taken the world down and we all are at home. Uh, trying to be safe and secure, but at the same time, I think it's very crucial that we um, are able to continue uh, to, ex we, you know, we are able to continue to extend our support and uh, to all the families out there who are battling with autism. Um, so as Anjana said, uh, telepractice is very useful and beneficial for um, children as well as adults on the autism spectrum. And uh, uh, it's important that we embrace telepractice, embrace teletherapy, because especially in these difficult times, um, if, if you are in touch with your therapist, either via coaching or via direct intervention, uh, you are still able to count, uh, ma make these uh, days count. And uh, rather than not doing anything, it's always better to um, meet your therapist regularly over these telepractice sessions. So Anjana, can you tell us any uh, experience of dealing with children with autism via telepractice and um, any um, thing that you would like to share? Uh, yes, of course. Um, uh, I've had uh, families who have had very young children uh, labeled uh, with a new, newly diagnosed with autism. And um, uh, that's the time I think when parents need the, the most support uh, that's because they're trying to understand the diagnosis. They need um, emotional support and uh, they need support as a family, not just putting the child in, in, in the picture, but they, they need much more beyond, you know, working one-to-one -one with, uh, with the child. 
So I have had very young children and have um, supported uh, families via telepractice. Um, that would be more of, uh, you know, coaching, parent coaching type of practice uh, where, um, uh, you know, parents, uh, you know, we, we help parents understand the diagnosis, the child's profile and um, um, what can, how can, I mean, they, they need, they need um, support in terms of understanding and um, they need support in terms of understanding the diagnosis. They need support in, in understanding the um, child's profile uh, and uh, they need to adapt uh, their mindset, their attitude, accept, accept, first of all. So uh, I think uh, then the whole focus is on um, helping the family adapt to the new diagnosis and new way of uh, life. Right. And then slowly, yeah, bring the child into picture and bring the child uh, and have, you know, uh, like we have face-to-face, -face in the physical setup, we have face-to-face -face sessions. So you, we can then gradually bring the child into picture and um, help the parents facilitate, um, you know, uh, a typical uh, session that we have face-to-face. Uh, so we'll have to go about planning uh, what the family family's needs are, what the child's needs are based on the uh, sensory motor profile of the child. Uh, so once we have a plan in place, we can carry out activities even via telepractice, um, yes. even via uh, any, you know, any platform, video platform. Um, yeah, so, so that's with very young children. But the, uh, with uh, children who have, there, there have been families I've worked with who, who have already, you know, gone through that stage of accepting and then, you know, beginning to work with the, with the child. Mm. There we can have, you know, we can do more work with the child. Uh, of course, having um, a plan in place uh, as to, you know, what, what are the goals and what are the um, intentions that parents bring forward. Um, and all that so we we can work more yes one, one on one with the child and and with older children of course they they, they can it works um, it works well it works it yes. works very well it works very well so yes yes even i have worked with uh, younger families and children um, teenagers as well and uh, i feel children love technology these days and they are much more comfortable in fact a lot of researches show that um, children uh, with autism they find because their social skills are poor um, uh, they find technology um, uh, they prefer it over meeting people in person and hence telepractice actually works for them um, because i think the screen takes away the barrier of a physical person and hence they are more comfortable uh, in a teletherapy session um, and there are numerous researches that support this view um, um, and, and I think when we are working with kids, be it any age, because age is not a barrier, we have our own set of challenges and the challenges happen even face to face, like in a regular brick and mortar therapy session. We have challenges in any practice sessions also. Some days the child's mood is not good or he has not slept properly or um, he was expecting something else and something else turned out. So these are some things that I have faced in my sessions um, online. And uh, hence planning, as you mentioned, Anjana, planning is very important. And uh, taking the child's lead uh, is another thing that I find very useful. Um, and keeping the parents involved at every step in what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, explaining it to them thoroughly, they all have helped a lot. Okay, so uh, um, the next thing that I, we would like to uh, highlight is how is telepractice done? Is it easy to set up? What all things you need as a parent um, or as a therapist uh, at your end to carry out uh, an effective session? Um, so Anjana, would you like to uh, give it a go? Yeah, I think, um, uh, there are certain technical requirements uh, to have a telepractice session. So it's, it's best done on a laptop, um, on, a, on a desktop. So if you have a computer or a laptop, uh, that works best. Um, some of them have, have been doing on, on um, a device such as an iPad. Mm. Uh, and phones are, uh, are not you know, very effective no, because no, the screen I, is I, very small. small. The screens are going to be very small. Yeah and you'll not have access to all the features. So desktop 
is i think the best um, okay um, yes i of... i agree first first uh, requirement is a desktop or a bigger screen laptop i had some um uh, you know families whom i worked with they plugged in their tv with the uh, uh, interface and then you know i used to appear really big to the child and uh, uh, yeah so so i think first requirement is a computer a desktop or a laptop um, next i would like to add uh, you would need a very good internet connection if you are looking at engaging the child with the good video uh, interaction you need good stable internet connection a hardwired or broadband uh, connection um, um but you know suddenly now we are all locked up in this in our houses and uh, we cannot procure uh, computers and you know internet connections all of a sudden so let this not be uh, something that holds you back from uh, telepractice um in india specifically we have internet fluctuations and in my practice i've seen that the geo dongle the data provided by geo dongle um, seems mm -hmm. to be okay um, working all right but if you have a better internet connectivity um, you are actually set up for uh, doing having a good tele practice online session anything you want to add anjana yeah i think that's that's pretty much it with uh, yeah a bro good broadband connection or a geo Yes. Um, so, yeah. I, I would like to add that when you are um, uh, taking an online session, please consider it as a session, especially for parents and families who are on the receiving end. It's important to um, think that it is a place that you know it's sort of a dedicated time that you are taking the child for therapy. So you do not do any other work during that time. Make sure the environment. Um, uh, you know is quiet and distraction free the child is um, in a good mood he has slept well he has been he has eaten something and uh, uh, is uh, you know you pep him up beforehand only about the session so that he really likes going to uh, the online session um, and uh, you know these are some uh, few things that i have i'm sure anjana you have also faced yeah, right uh, yes the yes, seriousness um, behind uh, an online session is quite important yeah yeah having a dedicated space, space. for um, <clears throat> an online session so so you know when you take the child there the yeah, child so, knows. so he feels that he has to be regulated he has to sit down and attend and uh, enjoy the session so that's also i think uh, an important point to remember right yes okay yes yeah, so now i think we can uh, touch upon um um some tips we can if we can discuss some tips for professionals who are either transitioning from um uh, you know a face to face brick and mortar uh, therapy to telepractice online therapy uh, so i think we can have yes have some discussion on how how, how we can trans okay so um i think first and most important point for any therapist who is doing teletherapy or is new to tele teletherapy is important uh, important point is that you have to be positive about it you have to believe in it you have to really embrace it and uh, understand that this does work it has its own challenges um but um, especially in these uh, hard times when you are at home and still connecting with your clients you just have to have that self belief that yes i can do it and i will be able to choosing the right platform for starting uh, tele practice is important um uh, and if you want to know a little more we have put up a facebook group i will be screen sharing and showing you something in a while about that coming back to specifically um, <clears throat> working with uh, kids with autism uh, on the spectrum and uh, during tele practice um, uh, some things that you can remember are um, firstly to um, be very planned because if you are not planned about the activities that you are going to do um, the session can just um, uh you know run away from you so planning even in brick and mortar therapy i feel with children with the asd we need to be really planned about what we are going to do i use uh, planning as my uh, biggest tool second tool um, uh, that i'd like to share is um that i i use a lot of visual schedules because children on the uh, spectrum are visual learners so even in my online session i keep a separate dedicated board of on what activities i will be doing in a session and i tell them that so we have a, a smooth transitioning uh, between the activities anjana if you want to add anything um right yeah i agree with that um planning is very crucial because 
uh, you know, things can go out of control in a, in a, in a teletherapy session. Um, you can't move around yes. too much. You need you to can't have... hold the child. You can't hug him yes, and yes, <laughs> to yes. do anything. So, yeah. Yeah. So to overcome that planning is, uh, I think, very crucial. Yeah. Like you said, um, I also use a lot of uh, visual schedules, like both. Right. Some mm-hmm. children do very well. They know what yes. to expect and, um, um, we can either have materials and use it, or we can have it um, on the screen. On the digital itself. form, yes. Yeah, in the, in yes. the digital form and uh, use that uh, as an interactive medium. Uh, so yeah, I think planning is very crucial and planning is also crucial at the end of, at the parents' end also. Yes, yes. We also need to have uh, the right some space. Materials. They need to be in the space. Yes. They need to be... Um, ready with some materials and uh, whatever that goes with the child's plan yes and um, a few more points that have worked for me are um, you know if um, if you if you are having a child who's interested in some particular thing because we know that kids with uh, on the spectrum have uh, restricted interests and uh, you know very narrow uh, likings so if you can use that that particular um, strength in the child and construct your own digital material uh, according to that or bring it in your session um, then that can really uh, improve your session a lot Um, another thing that I found is giving sensory breaks between activities helps to regulate the child I get this question from many uh, therapists and a lot of um, students whom I have trained therapists young therapists whom I have trained in daily practice about uh, how do we engage whether does the child sit in the online session how what do you do so I use a lot of um, some things that have really worked uh, with me over these years I use a lot of big things so you know like really big toys and come closer to the screen um, this works really well so I have plenty of big cuddly soft toys um, children love animals you know I have found so you can use big things um, things like that hello <laughs> and uh, you can use more interactive books with puppets to you grab the child's attention onto your screen um, playing eye contact games like we all do in regular sessions you know wear a wig you know paint your face or wear a big bindi Uh, play bindi games on the computer ask the child to stick bindis onto your face on the computer obviously that's after the consent of the parent Um, these are some tips that have helped again things which make you make the child interact with you bigger objects so here I have a big basket and some vegetables So I um, would want you to tell me what's this, for example, which is the yellow vegetable and the child can probably point out or say the name. Okay, let's collect vegetables. You can play simple sorting activities, separating. I mean, it's, um, um, you know, depends on what age and goals you are having with a particular child uh, and... uh, yeah so i thought i'll share yeah right right yeah as creative you can get as creative yeah, yeah. as you can and uh yeah so have some space around uh, you around so you move. yes yeah when you have a young when you're working with a um, family who has a younger child yeah i think you you need to have space yeah, and yes. the yeah parent also needs to have some space for the child to move to around, move around. Yeah, i think that's a great uh tip you know to to give sensory breaks to give breaks yeah to have I, movement I, breaks so it's it's not about uh, i think many parents uh, or therapists might be imagining it as you know, sitting in front of the screen and, and you know, just talking just, like you know you talk yeah, yeah. so it, it's yeah, definitely so it's not, not like not like that it's not like that you can um allow for more <laughs> movement um yes. and you like you said a lot of you, you, you can get creative. Creative, yes, yes, yeah. absolutely. So I uh, remember once I did a session with an occupational therapist inside my speech session. And then I remember, I think you were also yeah. a part of yeah. Yeah. similar yeah. setups. We have done that together. And uh, the sensory breaks <coughs> used to work well. You know, you let the child jump and you show him, a, <clears throat> you know, uh, a, probably whatever you are working on um, uh, in your session you just combine it with the sensory break uh, so that there is smooth transitioning and yeah um, i think yeah. the ultimate goal of any therapy via uh, be it teletherapy or 
a brick and mortar session is to make the child interact with you and interaction can happen through telepractice that is what we are trying to put forth um, um, and and uh, in my experience pratiksha the um, parent is more involved in this uh, kind of uh, service delivery because the pa- you need the parent uh, when you're working with very young children young you need children. the parent to be mm-hmm. alongside them so parents really get to participate and connect with children and yes. uh, you know many times it's, it's, there are moments of you know hugging the parent the child hugging the parent and yes. uh, you know those those uh, really uh, connecting Emotional moments, moments. Yes. yes yeah so that's very nice to see so I, i've seen that more um, happen during a telepractice session than um, a physical in a physical session, physical where, session. Uh, yeah in a, in a in a room where you we do it because you are the main person there uh, directing the therapist is the main person directing the activity right but whereas here um, it's the parent, it's the, parent. And the child it's the parent and the child so it's all good yes um, yes you can op- um, another thing once i did you can even open the fridge yeah you know the, oh, the yeah. other day i asked i asked a student we planned uh, an activity where the child had to open his fridge and show me what all was there inside and he had to label it and name it so you know you can just get creative uh, and i think professionals uh, need to embrace it again and again i'm harping on this since um, the outbreak of covid-19 telepractice is here to stay so the better the faster we embrace it the better it is for everybody uh it cannot replace uh traditional therapy but it is just an added advantageous tool which we all need to you know be more positive about absolutely i think we need to clear the perception of um our screen is not good and uh-huh. right if if it is guided you know and if it is interactive <coughs> it's not like you're watching a youtube video or you know a toy channel that your child is just glued on to you can use youtube videos during your sessions uh, but just get get that in the uh, right perspective um, so say if you're you know talking about numbers and your or yeah, colors absolutely. so you can play a um, you know a video which talks about numbers and colors and things like that yeah and i have also taken my laptop to the kitchen and <laughs> asked the child to direct me wow uh, how, yeah how to make a sandwich how to make oh that's lovely and and all that so so yeah it, it, there's no uh, <laughs> there, there are no limits um, you can to the possibilities yeah so i i think the magic is and, always you i mean the therapist skills um, are um, something that can really um, you know make a lot of difference yeah absolutely family. and uh, if there are short no two sessions or not every session is going to be uh, is going to turn out very well yes, because yes. there are some there are a lot of technical uh, issues issues that can also come up you, yes yeah so. uh, they can come up so I, i another suggestion from my end is that you can record videos you do something sh- you know you probably want to model something uh model and interaction or model doing something yes. uh, for the child you record it and then send it over to the parent yes. and they can watch it over at their yes. own pace yes uh, because live sessions are always you know like time bound and it's kind of compressed but yes. uh, you can add on more to what you're planning uh to work with the child uh by sharing videos you know uh, i think we, videos work very well and visual we all know visual um medium works very well very well with with kids on the spectrum it's on the spectrum so okay so this um uh, has been pretty exhaustive um and i thank anjana uh, for taking out time today um we are going to compile this video i just had to uh, share my screen to show you um <clears throat> some things that can really help the parents Uh, we have these couple of groups that we run on facebook i'm going to first show the group um that we have for um parents so there's this group called jump start your child speech uh, anjana and i both are there in that group and uh, you can uh, um, join this group it's a whole bunch of parents there you can drop in your queries and uh, um, you know ask your questions meet up with fellow parents um, it's a, cr- a time of crisis and i think we all need to be together in it 
So this is what we have for parents. That is jumpstart your child's speech. And the other group that we run is for um, tele rehab professionals. It's called the tele rehab club. Uh, in this group, uh, um, we post very uh, you know specific content for tele practice. And uh, um, it's got a lot of tips for professionals. So I would um, like to call out everybody to join us there in these uh, um, platforms. And uh, yeah, I am done with this. Okay, so let's closing note. Uh, this brings us to the end of this short video. Um, I hope you found this valuable. Anjana, any last tips, anything you would like to share? Yeah, I think uh, in the present times, uh, telepractice is quite a viable option for everybody, for therapists, professionals, and parents. Um, what I would like to say is that, you know, not to think of telepractice as just you know, sitting in front of the screen and, you know, finishing off the session. It's like, it's this whole package where uh, professionals connect with families. You can incorporate coaching. Um, yes. You can incorporate, um, um, you know, collaborative work. Uh, you know, you can make synchronous, asynchronous uh, sessions and you can make it work. So you can make it work as, um, as required by the family and based on the family's needs. Uh, so go for it. I would say go for it. Um, be open to this. And uh, as you suggested, Pratiksha has lots of resources on telepractice in particular, technical aspects and, and some creative um, ideas and tips. So you can head on to the groups and um, uh, get in touch with us to I think we, we, we will be sharing more in the coming yes. days. Yes. Um, so thank you so much for uh, um, joining us today. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, send us. Um, if you like this video, please li like it and share it with all your friends and colleagues. Thank you so much. Stay safe, stay home and keep well. Thank you. Bye-bye.